Hi there, Mark here again. Welcome to part three of my uh, TTO2D drift spec chassis build. Um, we've got this far so far, so most of the main chassis components are on. Um, and in this part three, we're going to open RC parts bag C and continue where we left off, which should be step 29. Um, this is checking the RC equipment and we're also going to put the um, servo saver onto the servo so basically what you need to do is connect up your electronics your servo um, turn everything on and get that servo centered up yep so this is servo functions okay so give it a turn left and right and let it center and then we're ready to go with the servo saver. So for this part we're going to need uh, this parts tree here which is P and we need P1, D10, P5 and D11 so I'll just get those parts now. So it'll depend on what type of servo you're using whether you'll need the P4 or the D11 um, mind the D11 fits on there get it as um, central as you can with the the tang, the, po the lug pointing downwards like so, just follow the orientation of the picture um, then what you need to do is fit on P5 easier said than done then put the steering arm pointing upwards like so you need your plastic washer which is your P1 and then whichever screw suits the center of your servo. Okay, and the finished servo and servo saver should look something like that. So, on to step 30, which is attaching the servo stay. So, we've got a5, D6 and these B11 ball connectors and then we've got the uh, the servo mounts here to screw on with the uh, 3x8mm screws it shows here which are MC4s so get your B11s and push them into part D6 ok so they are um, quite difficult to get in it says that here use some long nose pliers which I did in the end they do snap in so that's your B11's fitted <clears throat> what we need to do is to connect this now with an MB1 3 by 12 uh, if you're not sure of the sizes just check the lengths with the diagram on the side there so there's my 12mm screw it's going to go in there and through onto the central piece of uh, A5. Again, don't over tighten these screws because it does tend to lock up the movement there. And then we screw the other end into the back of your servo saver, like so. And then it's simply a case of getting the um, A12s and fitting them to the mounts on the servo using the 8mm screw and the washer. So your finished servo assembly should look something like this using the top mounts for the screws there onto these brackets okay and there's the steering arm lock. So we're just going to now on step 31 fit this into the chassis up front here there are two holes in the base there of the chassis this should sit on top there and then this link will go into the two steering arms so I'll just get those connected up now so the servo is fitted by the two countersunk screws make sure you use the countersunk screws from underneath and then this bridge here I'm just going to fit on with the two step screws 
so they go in like so so the servo in place um, it also says on step 31 to fit in the receiver well actually it says to thread um, your aerial through part D12 um, if you've got a long aerial then you'll need to do that I shan't be doing that because I've got um, a very short aerial on my receiver uh, step 32 is just attaching the RC unit in size which basically it's the ESC and your receiver um, depends which one you've got as you can see on mine I've put my TBLE ESC um, just behind the motor with double sided tape and then I've put my receiver on top of the servo you can probably see there so that's 32 tidy the cables up uh, as best as you can get them out of the way um, 33 is putting the it says uh, well it's wheels tires on the wheels but they're not really rubber tires they're these plastic things all you do is you push it over your wheel I must say it is a really tight fit took a lot of uh, pressure to get that tire onto the wheel um, it says to apply instant cement but um, I'm going to try it without at first because I can't move those now um, we'll see how we get on because I might want to put some different um, rubber tyres on to run it on road uh, speed testing and so on so I'll leave it as it is and see how it goes so you push the four tyres onto the four wheels and then onto step 34 which is when we attach the wheels it says to attach the front wheels on 34, on 35 it's attaching the rear wheels it's exactly the same procedure we need um, your BB3 which is 1050 bearing we need MA7 which is the 10 mil pin and you need A14 which is the um, hex adapter uh, it has got this brake disc effect on it so you can see I've painted mine um, I think to try and make it look a bit more like a, a steel disc so you might want to do that to yours so all I'm going to do now to, is show you how to do the one because all four are the same so you get your bearing you just simply push it over the shaft and into the recess get your pin push it through the hole be careful because it is a loose fit and it will just fall out uh, and then oh, you need your A14 just turn it around until you, you can feel it slip over that pin and it's turning the shaft now and simply pop on your wheel and then simply get your MC8 which is a flange lock nut and tighten it up so that's all four wheels fitted um, you might be able to just see the discs there through the wheels, I think that's a nice effect um, now you can feel the suspension working properly um, you might be able to see, I'm not sure, but if I drop this from up here there's absolutely no bounce on that so that's your oil filled shock working really well um, okay so next thing to do is step 36 and 37 which is attaching the body mounts or the body posts so I'm going to do step 37 first which is the front ones they can only go one way around bear with me you'll see why I'm doing this first in a minute um, so simply get your B5 and clip them into the back of the front shock tower you need your 10 mm screw and just screw that up and then the second one exactly the same okay so that's the front shock towers in place so we'll just turn it round now and I'm just going to loosely fit the rear ones as it shows the B6's in the same orientation in fact I'll just put the one in place for now so we'll just pop that in and what we need to do now is get our body and make sure it fits because you can put the rear ones on uh, into optional positions so if we get the body put the front posts through the holes like that as you might be able to see now just turn it around a bit the rear body post is nowhere near that hole can you see that 
So, what we need to do, because this is obviously going to need the option that's shown here in this cutout, where we use these optional B4 parts, which are like a little extender for the post. And then we need to put the post from the back end of the car, so the other way around. Simply pop the little extender B4 on like so. And then you need the longer also provided MC1, which is an 18mm screw. And push that through the other way around. So I'll just screw both of these on. Okay, so that's what it should look like when you've got the optional uh, mod body mount position. Um, and again now, if we just try the shell, offer it up again. Fit the front on first. And the back lines up perfectly now. So there you go, if you've got a skyline body, that's what you need to do. Okay, so that's that page finished. We're nearly there now. Um, step 38 is showing just attaching the urethane bumper. Obviously that goes on the front of the car, so we need the bumper. Simply pop it over the posts. You need this part, which is the actual uh, kind of a clamp for the for the urethane bumper, which is a B7, and you need your two 10mm screws, and they mount on the two inner holes, so like so. I'll just get that screwed on. So that's your bumper fitted, and 39 is fitting the battery. I won't put the battery in, but basically you get the battery strap which is part D1 and again I don't think it matters which way around it goes and there are two of these larger R clips provided and that will hold your battery in place so basically um, that's about as far as we can come because step 40 is fitting the body we haven't done that now yet so here we go this is um, going to be the end of build part three um, if you've stuck with me this long I really appreciate it I hope you've enjoyed it um, we've got a fully working chassis now and hopefully you'll join me on part four where we'll be getting that lovely uh, R33 skyline body and cutting it out preparing it and spraying it in uh, I think metallic red anyway thanks again and hope to see you soon mm -hmm.